Greetings, dear friends. Operational situation at the front and news for the 27th of January. We will start with you, of course, of the skopinski lemensky direction. Active fighting continues in this sector of the front, both in the area of Sinkovka itself and in the northern part. It was possible to repel the attack. There was another attack and Russian troops entered its northern part. Footage of the eastern and southeastern part of Ivanovka was also published. We do not record any significant changes, it is possible to repel attacks, and at the same time, the enemy is preparing the ground, so to speak, for further offensive actions on Tebyevka, Krestovoy, and Pesheno. Active hostilities have subsided in this sector of the front, positionality has shifted, but the number of tactical air strikes from the enemy has increased, and the footage was published yesterday. I will give just one example. The enemy strikes with air bombs at Tebyevka, Peshinoy, that is, the maximum destruction of infrastructure. And in principle we have already talked on you to Mikhailovka in this case. When we talked in the context of the fact that Marenko was destroyed, and destroying the infrastructure as much as possible, without giving the opportunity to naturally carry out normal rotations and so on and so on, the enemy was able to go further. The situation is similar in this sector of the front, that is, the maximum destruction of infrastructure. Due to this reduction in the number of places where the Afud defense forces can be located and then begin offensive actions. At the same time, will the Russian troops be able to gain a foothold, taking into account how they will use tactical aircraft and drones? They are betting on it that the Apu will not recapture those positions, so they will have enough smaller forces with superiority in the sky. In other words, there is a rather unpleasant moment like this. We are not only talking about this section of the front, this is as I repeat, Novomikhailovka, there are still a number of areas where the activity of Russian tactical aviation is quite high. In principle, Alexander Sirsky does not deny this either, when he gave comments on his section of the front. He said that the situation remains difficult, despite the fact that it is possible to repel attacks for the most part. This is both Sinkovka and a number of settlements where Russian troops carried out offensive actions. Yet their main task is on the fracture, that is, exhaustion, to find that gap in the defense when they are exhausted. That is, a very big bet is being made on this. There were also reports, in fact, not quite new, but that Russian troops had also intensified in the Svetovo direction, where they had previously, as you remember, attacked in a number of areas. There is positivity somewhere. There is somewhere an increase in the attack on this sector of the front, including western Kozemovka. In the Novoselovsky area, footage was published, it was possible to repel these attacks, but as we see the enemy in neighboring areas, as we said, he will take action in order to disperse our forces. Therefore, there is this activity, but it is possible to restrain it. Similarly, Makievka. We do not record any significant changes in this sector of the front, but attacks from the enemy are intensifying. That is, it is from the new water, from the site itself in the area of the attack beam. There is also some activity in the area of Turnov, in the direction of Turnov, Vostikny Turnov, in the area of the round beam, Yara Lapteva, Yara near, Yara far, but it now has a positional character without any changes. In Balogorovka, Lahansk region, the Seversky direction, clarifications were added, shots from the Afu were published, where the enemy is located within the gray zone, one of the positions he occupies, therefore, a red zone was added, a zone of control of Russian troops by geolinking frames from drones. We have talked before, when we spoke for Balogorovka, that first of all there is from the north, there is from the east, and most likely there will be activity from the southeast of the Russian troops, which we are now seeing. In other words, they have become as active as possible in this sector of the front. Footage of the use of a tank from the Russian side was also published, but as the Apu published, it was possible to knock out this tank. So we do not record any changes in the east of Balogorovka, but the pressure from the Russian troops on the settlement continues. In principle, it is already north, northeast, east and southeast of the settlement. 
they will definitely take more activity to the south, based on the fact that they are now trying to disperse the forces of the armed forces of Ukraine in this sector of the front, as much as possible. The positional nature of the fighting in the disputed area, in the Vizli area, in the direction of Ivanodeevka and the excavation. We do not record any changes. Bakhmut direction, northern flank Bogdanovka. Yesterday, a video was published by one of the soldiers of the 93rd Brigade, according to the information that they now have from their area of responsibility, and actually on Bogdanovka. So, the enemy reportedly managed to take control of up to 40% of the settlement. Therefore, we note a small advance of Russian troops in this sector of the front, in Bogdanovka itself, adding a red zone and expanding the gray one. We managed to take a number of positions. At the same time, more recent information was received by the evening of yesterday that it was possible to dislodge the Russian troops. And at the same time, the Russian military river reported that Russian troops had retreated to the northeastern part of the settlement. So the situation is being clarified. And there is some activity, both according to reports from our fighters of the 93rd Brigade and according to drone footage. Visual confirmation of enemy activity in the area of the junction of two forest belts, a forest belt and a road. So it was possible to repel attacks in about this area, so part of the forest belt is controlled, but it is possible to restrain, preventing further progress. Therefore, this is the situation we have on the northern flank. As for the southern flank, fighting continues between Ivanovsky and Kleshaka, but as we have already said, the enemy is betting not on the Kleshayevsky fortified area, not to advance to Ivanovsky, but to take a number of positions in the forest belt and in the forest plantation north of the Kleshayevsky fortified area. The situation in this sector of the front continues to be clarified because small enemy infantry groups periodically attack. In any case, it remains in a gray zone, a plot without confident control from either side. According to Kleshevka and Drivka, north of Kurdyumovka without any changes. Fighting of an oppositional nature continues. We turn to the Avdiivka direction. On the northern flank, it was possible to dislodge Russian troops from one of the forest belts. Although we spoke with you on previous broadcasts, reports continue to arrive about the activity of Russian troops in this sector of the front. Moreover, a few days ago, we said by geolinking, that the Russian troops managed to reach approximately this area of the gray zone again. From the neighboring forest belt, they made an attack then, but managed to knock them out, so a gray zone was added. Russian troops are not currently present in one of the forest belts west of the railway. At the same time, there is activity on their part in the north, northwest, that is, in the direction of the Garden Association, or conditionally Novobokutovku. We do not record any negative changes except for the addition of a gray zone. According to the standard, there are no changes in the northern section, north of Avdiivka. So here, I will also comment on one point in more detail. As you remember, the Russian troops pressed into the clearing structures in the direction of the Ivushkatu and Yagodka Garden Partnership, as well as in the Ivushkatu Garden Partnership itself, or rather Ivushka 1. Here, to the south of the treatment facilities, as well as from Kamenka to the service station, the Rainbow Partnership, and we said that they would try to close this ledge, and there was an attempt to improve tactical positions. The Russian troops attacked with the support of armored vehicles, so several armored vehicles, BMP tanks attacked. This is exactly the T-shaped intersection that we see located. We managed to completely repel this attack, but in any case, as you can see, the enemy went even further from Vizli than from the previous time. If last time it was possible to stop approximately in the middle of the gray zone and no changes were recorded, then today another gray zone is added and the situation looks like this. In other words, the Russian troops are now pushing as much as possible in the direction of the sand pit. We talked about this in the context of the fact that the neighboring forest belt is important to them from which they carried out the attack, because its capture, at least its part of the forest belt, would strengthen the flank position and continue offensive actions in the Avushkatu Garden Association, and get as close as possible to Avdiivka already, but from the north, that is, to Avdiivka itself.
Here, just the same, we have the junction of Avdiivka and the Garden Partnership, a difficult area for offensive actions due to the fact that the cascade of stakes, Sandy, it is limited. But nevertheless, the enemy goes to such actions. Therefore, a gray area has been added. Southern flank, south of Avdiivka, south of Avdiivka. What is happening today? It means that the Russian military commander Abar reported that Russian troops were going on the defensive in a number of positions. This is just the same Chernyshevsky Street, Sportovnaya Street, Sobornaya Street. The situation remains quite dynamic, so it changes several times during the day. A red zone is added somewhere, it decreases somewhere. So we do not record any significant changes in this sector of the front. So it means that, having gone on the defensive, of course, we are talking about the south of the Staroya Avdiivka district. The southeastern part of the Russian troops are pulling up additional forces, and fighting continues, including in the landing itself. So, they are trying to gain a foothold in a number of areas, and I repeat, they are pulling up additional forces, preparing for further assault actions, and there were also attempts to strike again from Yasinovatsky Lane in the western direction, Kolosova Street, and accordingly, from Sobornaya Street to Sadova Street, Lesno Lane. That is, to close the ledge with the Dubrava Garden Association and a number of fortifications are being undertaken by Russian troops. Therefore, active hostilities continue. The situation has remained dynamic for several days. As for Zenit, as you understand, Cheboroshka is also here without any changes. We have exposed the previous stuffing, that they were allegedly taken, or parts of them were taken, this does not correspond to reality. Although the situation is quite complicated, we will speak as it is. May Day Here, the enemy continues offensive actions. Unfortunately, we have periodically marked the red zone this year, on the basis of geolinking of drone footage. And new information has appeared. In a section up to 200 meters wide, Russian troops advanced to a depth of up to 50 meters. This is actually not the May Day itself, this is a garden association located, which belongs to the May Day. And along Voroshilev Street, I would say more adjustment already according to the situation. The situation was yesterday, the situation is today. I mean this clarification, because it was clarified for the previous period, but in any case, yes. The enemy managed to advance here. There are attacks, of course, along Voroshilev Street, and in the Garden Association itself. At the same time, we have some activity northwest of Izmailovsky from the Russian troops, as well as from a number of positions where they have drone operators, it's about in this area, they regularly work on them. But you need to understand that there are positions underground, so there is an enemy just like work on this sector of the front. Therefore, active hostilities continue in our country, and in Pervomaisky. As for the Kurikovsky and South Donetsk directions, we do not record any significant changes. Russian troops continue to try to advance in the eastern part of Georgievka, in the western direction, we do not record any changes. I repeat. At the same time, there is activity along the forest belts, but it has an absolutely positional character. And we have a similar situation in Novomikhailovka. Periodically, the enemy attacks again within the gray zone, trying to come close to Novomikhailovka again, to a number of positions of the advanced Apu, but it is possible to repel these attacks, so we do not record changes. Moreover, a number of Osinters transfer the Grey Zone to the Apu Control Zone, approximately in this area, southwest of Novomikhailovka, but here I would say, the situation is being clarified, because the enemy can attack, and there is no reliable information that the Apu is entrenched there, so it all remains for further clarification, that is in the gray area. Moving on. The old line direction is unchanged. In the Orekovsky direction, fighting continues south of work on, southwest of work on, as well as northwest and west of Verbovoy. We do not record any significant changes. If to the west and northwest of the recruitment initiative is for the land, then just to the south and southwest of the work on here. The initiative is for the enemy, he continues to attack, but we do not record any new changes. Attacks in the area of fortifications of the district were recorded in the area of the intersection, 
approximately in this area. It was possible to repel. The footage was published by Omega, the enemy retreated, the infantry attacked with an infantry group. The remaining part retreated to their original positions. And there is also information that it was possible to dislodge Russian troops from one of the forest belts west of Rabatin. The situation remains to be clarified, as we have no visual confirmation. Well, actually, the fact that there was more of a gray zone instead of a red one near Avdiivka, and the fact that in this sector of the front, the Orkhov direction has already been stopped somewhere, and even knocked out Russian troops from one of the forest belts, is a fact. In other words, there is a moment when the enemy has problems on the battlefield. What are they related to? They are related to the number of drones, because information is already being received, that somewhere the upi. We said that somewhere there is parity, somewhere they even surpass, there is information, there are even comments from Russian fighters, that they complain, that the Apu has superiority in a number of areas under the drone, and where then they complain, that the Apu has a more effective rap system. For example, the same trench rap dome type, compact. I mean, compact rap systems, they're in the form of a small suitcase, and they are quite effective. This means, that it is more efficient, than the Russian ones, which is very very good. Well, actually, the Russian troops complained about this in the Rynik area, that the dome wrap system works quite effectively there, much more seriously than the Russian one, and actually we see its further spread across the battlefield. There is such a moment. Well, there are also complaints that not only WAVs, aircraft from the AFU are active, but also ground-based drones, wheeled, tracked, which conduct mining, that is, remote mining, which creates a number of difficulties. In principle, we once talked about this, that such 